Okay, guys, Dr. Tom is back, coming at you once again. We left off with uh, gastrointestinal uh, medications. So here we go again. Start right back where we left off. Common complaints of the gastrointestinal tract include ulcers, GERD, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease. This is real common, and you need to learn it, guys. Dyspepsia is indigestion. Pyrosis is, is uh, 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 er eroding away of the esophagus. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation. Cause of GI complaints. This is about where we left off. Poor diet. That's a big one. A big one. Stress affects the stomach a lot. Alcohol and caffeine, especially if you drink, drink too much of it. Both of them are known to aggravate the gastrointestinal tract. Smoking. NSAIDs. Now here's the word. I wish they had this earlier, but they got it now, so that's good. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Ibuprofen. The uh, brand name is Motrin. There's other ones. That's the only one I can remember. This is actually one I like, and I take some. But you got to be sure you take it on food, guys. Some people, if they have a history of gastric ulcers, they can't take it at all, or it could be fatal. Infection with um, Heliobacter pylori, H. pylori. Uh, when I was working in family medicine in the 90s, a bulletin came out. Bingo said, hey, we've discovered that a bacterium causes most of the ulcers in the body. Now, prior to that, they, they thought that would be impossible because the, the high acidity, the very low pH of the, of the gastric content said, no, nah, nah, you know, no, no bacteria can do anything there. It gets destroyed by the acid. Well, they were wrong. In fact, this H. pylori is the leading cause of it. So they, you never know, guys. You know, they, just out of the blue, they did some research, and bingo, they found it. Yeah. So now they can give specific antibiotics for ulcers, because ulcers can be really serious and, uh, and help cure them. And acids, neutralized stomach acid. Most are non-systemic. Sodium bicarbonate can have a systemic, a systemic effect. Alum, they're aluminum or calcium-based, may cause constipation. Magnesium-based may cause diarrhea. Well, you got one or the other. Guys, let me just say this. Now, we have to have acid in the stomach. It helps break down the bomb, the peptide bonds of proteins. Protein digestion, you might recall, begins in the stomach. And it also acts as, as a protective factor. It doesn't protect against H. pylori, but it does a lot of other things. But actually, guys, a lot of people don't have enough acid in their stomach, particularly older people. And the conventional medical approach is to keep throwing antacids at them, which I'm assuming could just make the problem worse. It's a little hard to determine, though, to be able to measure that. But there's actually, in, in, among the natural health people, there's some people that give acid tablets to older people, and it helps them. Okay, but in any case, these are quite common. You know. It's automatically assumed there's too much acid if you got upset stomach. Forget about that pizza and box of ice cream you ate. Histamine H2 receptor antagonists inhibit gastric acid secretion, inhibit gastric acid stimulation, adverse reaction, generally well tolerated. Some may affect libido or sexual function. Damn, you can't even take something for your, <laughs> for your acid without affecting that. Should not be used during pregnancy or breastfeeding or children younger than 16. Tagamet, Pepsid, Zantac, you, you've probably heard all. A lot of these are uh, available over the counter. Proton pump inhibitors, let's see. Suppress gastric acid secretion. A proton, guys, is basically a hydrogen ion. Think about it. Hydrogen has one proton and one electron. You remove the electron and make a hydrogen ion. What do you have? Just a proton. Dosage varies with drug medication. Should not be crushed or chewed. Example, Prilosec. Prilosec. Uh, that's a vex. Prevacid. I've heard of that. Nexium. The little purple pill. Oh, yeah. yeah. These things, guys, sell by the truckloads. Cause, why? Because people eat a bunch of damn junk out there. They overeat. They keep packing away those three big heavy meals a day and a bunch of snacks and chips and stuff and, and like i always make fun of this but you know larry the cable guy used to do uh uh commercials about prilosec otc means over the counter and prilosec otc you take it and you can go out and it shows him at a county fair eating corn dogs and doing, uh, all, all that fried crap and everything they sell out there and then it's where you can take this and you won't hurt basically what about cutting back on some of that? You know, I know you don't go to the fair once a year, but, you know, maybe you could have one corn dog instead of four. I know I'm being sarcastic. 
Guys, when you grow up in the rural south and live there like I did for years, you see all this stuff all the time. Sucrophant, let's see, cytoprotector means protects cells, not inhibit release of acid. Acid is coats the surface of the damaged mucosa. That might be something good because you got to have that acid in there, guys. There's a thick mucosal lining to the stomach with a lot of mucus to help protect it, too. Prevents insect induced gastric ulcers. You got to be careful with these, guys. Again, if a person has a history of ulcers, they basically cannot take insects. Inflammatory bowel disease. Conditions with chronic or reoccurring immune response and inflammation of the GI tract. These are two common ones. You need to be familiar with them. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. They can be very serious. Many years ago in a little town I grew up in, I knew a young guy that died from ulcerative colitis. He worked at the bank. He was a real nice looking guy. And all, had a big career ahead of him and it got him. Okay, relief of symptoms. Uh, Immunosalicyclates, antibiotics, corticosteroids, immunologulates, clinical trials. Okay. Uh, anytime you got something, guys, that has something to do with the immune system, it's hard to treat. And some of these are, you see ads on television quite often for different medications. You know, it shows somebody that they have to just hang close to the bathroom all the time. It's really sad. And I don't know how much success they have with curing this stuff. I think they can get it under control. All right, laxatives makes you go number two. Bulk forming laxatives like um, Metamucil swells up. Lubricants like mineral oil, osmotic laxatives like the, the ones with the, the salt solution. Oh, no, that's the saline. Stool softener, stimulant laxatives, stimulate the peristaltic waves. Uh, laxatives are real important, guys. They can be, but you got to be careful you can get addicted to them. Get where you have to have them. Uses. Constipation. Before surgery, diagnostic testing like... Uh, if you're going to have a colonoscopy, you got to you got to clean that thing out real good. I've never had one, but <laughs> you go get this liquid at the drugstore. It's a prescription laxative. They say it does the job. After anti-helminic ther hel therapy, that's worms, to speed elimination of the parasites. Sometimes people have worms, guys. Reduction of strain of defecation for cardiac patients. You have to strain too hard, oh, it might be too much for your weak heart. Contraindications, impacted stools, appendicitis, obstruction, hepatitis, third trimester of pregnancy. Yeah, no, I'm not even going to go there. Let's just say you might be in for a surprise. Abuse potential. Yeah, well, they're linked, you know, you, you, they're linked to weight loss and to being slimmer all too, guys. And to diarrheal agents. Avoid salicyclates, that's aspirin, with Pepto-Bismol. Lamotil is a schedule for control substance. Do not use modal with MAO inhibitors. We're going to talk about that later. Ammonium contraindicate for patients with severe ulcerative colitis or pseudomembranous enterocolitis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, diarrhea can be quite serious, guys, if it gets severe because you start losing, you start becoming dehydrated. And you, you also uh, can start becoming start losing too much sodium and uh, affect the nerve function stuff. Anti-helmintics. Helminths are worms. Helminthiasis is intestinal infestation by parasitic worms associated with unsanitary living conditions. It can be treated with anti medication. And there's a table you can see. When I, oh, I don't know about me. Little kids often get worms because they eat dirt. You know, the, Well, they used to. Now they're the little plump pink bodies are sitting in front of TV all the time or a computer or phone. I've seen three-year-olds with a phone just constantly. Up there. I don't think it's good, guys. Not that much that early. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, for example, if they, a third-world country where they don't process waste appropriately, uh, you can get worms from that. And a prozole agent. We mentioned one protozoa, amoeba, amoebas here a minute ago, previous slide. Uh, tape. Protozoa often found in developing countries, travel and military increased incidence in in, uh, in the U in the U.S. Malaria, giardiasis, trichomonas, amoebiasis. This is what we mentioned. Malaria is quite serious. It still is responsible for about a, a million deaths a year around the world. Trichomonas, uh, yeah, giardiasis. Okay. Uh, look at Table 22.8. Anti-protozoal agents. 
I would say, guys, that most of these are spread probably, well, malaria is spread by uh, mosquito bite, but a lot of this stuff in EBA cells is spread through untreated water. And it will light you up, they say. Okay, medics, induced vomiting. Contraindicated if you ingested a caustic substance. Why? Well, it's already burned going down. If you make a vomit, it's going to burn again coming back up. Activated charcoal is given after vomiting stops. There's syrup of, they used to call it syrup of epicac. Why? Well, there's a number of reasons. Guess if a person got poisoned or something or <coughs> something, that's why they might need to induce vomiting in them. Again, if it's a caustic substance, you don't, you don't want to because it'll just burn his way back up again. All right, we finished. Okay, this is for week two. We got one uh, one more set of PowerPoints for that. Okay, guys, look over these things, learn them, become familiar with these basic, these major pathologies and the, the types of drugs. Anytime it says there's a, uh, shows a table, please take a moment, look at the table, and read over it. Okay, I'm gonna sign off and go to my next one. So we'll see you next time, Dr. Tom. Signing off.